Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. Clean headshot. <laughs> kind of makes me proud the way I can bring a man down without so much as speck in his shirt. <laughs> Not a bad swap, this horse for mine. At least it won't be so conspicuous. It'll be a long time before anybody looks for him, whoever he is. <laughs> By the time the buzzards and wolves get through with him, ain't nobody gonna know who he is no how. <laughs> Wouldn't be a bad idea. What's that? What are you doing? You giving up that pretty gun of yours just to make believe you're dead? This gun's a small price. See them wanted posters on me up north, Cancel. We said you was a smart fella. Thank you, Mr. Vale. You'll be remembered once they see that gun you're wearing. <laughs> Not with kindness, certainly remembered. <laughs> Good morning, young fella. I see you're finally up. I sure did sleep lately. Well, that's growing sleep, boy. <coughs> Never did a youngin' any harm to stretch out on a bunk and add on to them inches. I don't know about growing, but it sure does feel good to sleep late after the uh, roosters are crowing. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I see Paul hasn't gotten back from the yearling sale yet. Uh, he, he'd be a mite late. He mentioned his rifle needed a new spring, and he's going to stop at the gun shop in Red Creek. Well, uh, I'll take care of your uh, milking chore for you, Mr. Stevens. Uh, it's all done. All done. Oh. Uh, I'll tell you what you can do, though. You can go out and uh, tidy up the stalls a little bit and maybe pitch them a little more hay, huh? All right. <laughs> I say you're the luckiest man in the world, but you've had your share of luck this morning. Say, it's just a bullet, Priest, huh? No doubt about it. A rifle, by the looks of it. Boy, my head still feels like it's being hit with a sledge. What <laughs> night, it'll feel like it's more than one sledge that's doing the pounding. But every time you feel like wincing, just tell yourself you're alive by the grace of God. All right. 
Jack, did you ever see me before? Can't say I have. You mean you don't know my name? You mean you don't know who you are? I woke up with this head about an hour ago. What happened to me before that? Where I came from, what I'm going, I just... I'm not a bit surprised that rifle went off at close range. Don't you worry, my young friend. This loss of memory is never permanent. Loss of memory? The concussion will wear off in two or three days at the most. You'll start remembering little things. Well, there shouldn't be much mystery as to who you are. George Vale. George Vale. Well, I guess that clears that up. Well, Doc, I better, better give you some money. That's quite all right. I'm fussy about the money I place in my pocket. What's the matter with the money, Doc? Not knowing who you are might enable you to sleep well tonight, Mr. Vale. Or perhaps your sleep has been undisturbed in the past. There are men who feast on pain and misery. Oh, look, Doc, I don't understand what you're trying to say. Good day, Mr. Vale. You arrest him? Uh, nothing would give me greater pleasure to see George Vale at the end of a rope. As far as I know, he's not even wanted in this territory. Yeah, well, what can I do for you? I'm uh, putting up at the hotel tonight. Uh, yeah. You have a horse here? Yeah, it looks like one of the white horses. Widen horses. Maybe my name would mean something to you. George Vale. Well, lots of horses look alike, Mr. Vale. I wasn't questioning it not being your horse. Should there be any doubt? None, Mr. Vale. None at all. for that myself. Look, Sheriff, I was bushwhacked about four miles east of town when I woke up. Now, what happened before that and where I was going or coming from, it, well, it's a complete blank. Too bad that bushwhacker didn't have a street or aim. Oh, wait a minute, Sheriff. I came over here looking for an answer. Who, who am I? Who's George Vale? Now, I just passed your gun shop a few seconds ago, and I had a feeling that a gun shop had a special meaning for me. Except for that, well, that one clean thought, I, I feel like I was just born. Are you trying to tell me, Vale, you don't know you're a wanted man? Wanted man? What am I wanted for? If you're not wanted for, it'd be a shorter story. All over Wyoming, they got dead or alive posters on you for murder and robbery. I'm on my way right now over to the telegraph office, hoping a wire will find you're wanted someplace in this town. One more question, Sheriff. Did you ever see me before? Can you say positively that I am George Vale? Mm -hmm. 
Six foot five, 200 pounds. Not many men walking around fit that description. And carrying that murdering gun you're so proud of, you had your name put right on the handle. Now listen to me, Vale. I want you out of town by the end of the day. One, I wouldn't be surprised if some hotheads around here decided to do the world a favor and string you up. Two, I'm liable to forget I'm a lawman if I see you walking around this town and come after you myself. Don't look like your pa's gonna get back here for noon vittles, either. I was thinking maybe I could ride into town and meet him there. Well, I guess it's all right if you want to. I suppose you... you're grabbing a bite and red pick with your pa. But don't forget, I'm expecting you back here for supper. Anything you want us to bring back, Mr. Stevens? Just a couple of big appetites. I've got a lot of venison to get rid of, you know. <laughs> well, pa and me always bring back a lot of appetite after a long ride. <laughs> See you for supper. Decided to ride into Red Creek and see if you... Something wrong? Why do you call me Pa, boy? Because you are my... Oh, you must be fooling me again. Oh, I'm not fooling. Who are you? Oh, come on, Pa. Hey, you hurt, Pa? What's your name, boy? Are you... Are you playing the game? Is your name Vale? You know it's not. Well, then what is it? Mark McCain. McCain, same as your name is. Oh, my name is... My name is Vale, boy. Oh, do you really know me? George Vale. No, I, I don't know you, sir. Something's wrong. Something's happened to you. You just wait right here, Paul. Go we'll get a doctor. Come with me, my paw's hurt. What way, son? Well, I don't know. He's just walking around, not bleeding or anything, but he see can't seem to remember a thing. I... Well, as long as he's walking around, he can wait until I'm finished. I guess so, but, but hurry. Well, why don't you just sit down, son, and I'll be through in about three shakes. <laughs> Bob rode to the line shack, all right. The hill's in there now. I wonder what kind of a man it takes to shoot a 16-year-old in the back for a horse. George Bell, we're coming in. You better have a gun in your hand. Did you hear, murderer? to reach for your gun, mister. I don't see any reason for gunplay. We buried our brother just an hour ago. You murder and horse thief! Maybe if you'd calm down, we could get this straightened out. You ride that horse into town? Yeah. You got some fancy story as how you can buy it? So you're better at murdering than making up stories. Vail, well, you better get up on your feet. When I count to three, I'm gonna draw. Giving you a chance you never gave our brother. Now get up! One, two! I'm not drawing. I've got no quarrel with you two that I know about. Yeah, I've never seen a back shooter yet that could look a man in the eyes and draw against him. 
Maybe I can beat some gumption into you. I'm going to give you a taste of the pain that Joe and me had when we buried my brother. And I'm going to turn you over to the sheriff for a quick trial on the hang and... Well, this ought to hold you for a while. You rest here a little. Our business is a hanging. Hanging? But he's my pa! All right, what's going on here? Bob was shot in the back today at our line shack. The horse was taken away from him. The one George Vale rode into town. One time you overstepped yourself, Vale. You're in a town that cries and hangs the same day. But he's not George Vale! He's my pa! Well, maybe he's been raising you under another name, son, but he's George Vale, all right. He's not! We've been staying at the Stevens Ranch! Mr. Stevens will tell you who we are. How long has Stevens known you? For years, eh? Well, even before I was born. He and Paul lived in the same town back in Oklahoma. Well, should be easy to prove his story. Aaron, you mind riding out to Stevens, Fred? Should make it back before dark. All right, son. We'll leave you two here at the livery. Your pa's not going anywhere in the shape he's in. You and Joe keep an eye out here. If Aaron gets back, we'll have the truth of this. I'm not buying the kid's story, Sheriff. Hard to swallow. But I'm not making any mistakes when there's a hanging in the office. All right, boys, come on. Break it up. Come on, Pa. Come on, Pa. Let's go. Come on, Pa. Come on, Pa. Come on, Pa. Him having Bob's horse is enough for me. Thinking the same. I'll talk to some of the boys at the saloon, see how much backing we'll get. Feeling better, Paul? Yeah, thanks, boy. What am I going to do to convince you I'm not your pa? As soon as Mr. Stevens gets here, we'll know who you are. Right here. Aaron, get back in with Stevens. Take him about another hour yet. Uh, we've been wondering. What if Stephen says that George Vale is another man? Well, then he's somebody else. Would be lying. Maybe Stephen's worked with Vale on a couple of jobs. Owes him something. Oh, that's nonsense. Stevens is nothing more than a hard-working rancher. Maybe. Maybe not. Him riding Bob's horse kind of tells a whole story. The boys and me were kind of wondering just where you stood. What boys? From the saloon. Now you listen to me. There'll be no saloon justice in this town as long as... I guess you'll be resting in one of your own cells for about an hour, Sheriff. You're making a mistake, Joe. I've seen too many mistakes made from the other side. Killers walking out free because they had better liars on their side. Well, nobody wants to hurt you, Sheriff. So walk nice and easy. Over with quick. No, 
No, you're making a mistake! No, he's my boy! He's my oh. boy! <laughs> It's a sod buster. Yep, it's him, all right. Here's we're just in time to see the good citizens of this town lynch George Vail. Amen, brother. Well, of course that's McCain. It's all I'll right. kill the first man who tries to stop me from leaving. It's all straightened out, Lucas. Now you can put down that gun. Stand back! It's Mr. Stevens, Pa. Everything's all right. Lucas, you know me. I'll put that gun down. Come on, George. Let's get out of here. That gun down, huh? Maybe have you changed your minds that I'm George Vale? Now you stand back. I'm not gonna waste the next one. It's true, Pa. Everyone believes who you are now. You get on back, boy. I don't want to hurt you. Go on. It's best to let him ride out, son. He's been through so much that nothing makes any sense now. Pa, you, you can't ride out. You just can't. Come on. Let's take it easy. Nobody knows us. We'll get the horses and we'll get out of here. behind you. There's your horse and your rifle. You remember your rifle? You were coming into town to get it fixed at the gun shop. Gun shop. Looks like you made a mistake, Frank. Apologies, huh? I told you that he was Lucas McCain, a, a rancher, and my pa. Well, you say pa sounds good to me, son. I'm a rancher. It's a small place, but we're sure happy there. Well, after a while, after being wanted for robbery and murder, a small rancher sounds good to me, too. Son. Well, that was a pretty good meal. If I'm allowed to brag of my own cooking. You sure didn't forget how to handle a skillet. Huh. You remembering more things now, Paul? Well, some things are coming back. Others are still a little hazy. Uh, how about dishes? Dishes? Oh, we used to have an arrangement where one night you'd wash them, then the next night I would. Oh, yes, I remember that arrangement. Well, tonight's your night to wash them, Paul. <clears throat> Mark, you know, an important thing like whose turn it is to do the dishes is something a man doesn't forget. And one of the first things I remembered was that tonight is your turn to do the dishes. I guess your memory is coming back. Paul, I wouldn't have really taken advantage of you. I know you wouldn't, son. Look, I'll do the dishes tonight. This is one time I'll find pleasure in doing the chores. You sit down. All right. 